Right, so for as much as our politicians have been abject failures in seeing things from anything other than Israel's perspective in this recent conflict, our mainstream media has been no better. The constant asking of that first question to pro-Palestine advocates being, do you condemn Hamas? Being a blatant attempt to frame the argument rather than actually be able to stand up and speak on behalf of innocent Palestinians who are being caught up in this genocide that Israel is conducting on the basis of trying to rescue hostages, they tell us. Yet by bombing indiscriminately on the premise that Hamas hides behind human shields, they are showing no regard for Palestinians, nor actually for the hostages they purport to be trying to rescue, because unless their view of liberating them comprises of liberating them from existence, I can't see how anyone can say a meaningful rescue attempt of any sort has been tried by Israel. Yesterday in London saw the British public's view on this situation in their biggest show of solidarity with the Palestinian people yet though, as for the third weekend in a row people took to the streets up and down the country, half a million alone in London. But if you happen to be watching the BBC to be informed on what happened there yesterday, you might have been given a very different picture of what actually happened. Right, so yesterday once again demonstrations happened up and down the country from London to Manchester to Glasgow as people marched in solidarity with Palestine in flagrant opposition to the narratives being set by our establishment party leaders. But the BBC, those ever so loyal servants to establishment interests, stuff full of Tories at the very top as it is, a very different message was being sent out. And I'm going to focus on the London marches here because frankly I have to. London-centric BBC only focusing on that particular march in any detail, the detail being to play it down and discredit it, rather than show it for what it actually was. This morning, the breakfast bulletin on this march in London went like this. More than a thousand metropolitan police officers were deployed across the capital to keep order as people protested against attacks on Gaza three weeks after Hamas launched a surprise attack on Israel, killing more than 1,400 people and taking 229 hostages. Within the crowds were chants of, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, seen by Israel and most Jewish communities as a threat to its existence, and by the Home Secretary Suella Braverman as anti-Semitic. Pro-Palestine supporters say it is a call for freedom. No action was taken by the police over the chanting. The report here was, reporter here was Laura Trant, who had been introduced by the studio anchor after saying tens of thousands of people marked in London. I have to say I've seldom heard more dishonest reporting than this particular one. Half a million people downplayed to just tens of thousands. We've seen the footage. We've seen the crowd sizes. We've heard from people who were there about the scale of this demonstration. How dare you minimise that? I also had to check this Laura Trant woman out, had, that she hadn't come up from the sort of, thi sort of background as Guido Fawkes or some other batshit right-wing hat crag. Such was the overt bias and comically bad sourcing of what she was saying in her report too. It was offensive in so many ways. But this was BBC 101 for those of us who don't watch the Blasted Channel anymore for precisely this reason. First off, more important than the march itself, more important than the reasons for it, they had to begin with a reminder of the police presence. There's police there because, you know, all oh, these pro-Palestine demonstrators, they're troublemakers, it's bound to kick off. Better fill the place up with the fuss. We need to tell people that the police were there keeping things safe. Well, funnily enough, the Met Police have their own Twitter account and, well, they were keeping people updated with their responses overseeing this demo. Half a million people marching, or tens of thousands if you take the BBC line. How many arrests then? It's the day after the BBC feel that that's the start point, that's where they have to begin their coverage. The police presence should be the main focus. How many arrests were there then? Well, there were nine. Nine people were arrested. Nine people. Seven for public order offences and two for assaulting police officers. Out of... Half a million people? Well, that's pretty good going, isn't it? What about the next point then? People demonstrating for Gaza after Hamas launched a surprise attack on Israel. Now, there's no defence of Hamas here. What they did was to pray. But the narrative here is that all these people, well, they're, they're clearly all wrongins, all half a million of them, because they're demonstrating for Gaza after Israel was attacked. How dare they? How offensive! To date, 6,000 Gazans are dead with a further 20,000 wounded. But Israel is the BBC message, though. Well, Israel allegedly were informed by Egypt that these attacks were coming, so not so much of a surprise, was it? Sure, the deaths there were completely avoidable, but it's Israel that hold the keys to the kingdom and have it within their power to end this by letting Gazans be free, what they're calling for. Instead of being two million people interred in the biggest concentration camp on the planet, as the Gaza Strip is. 
Israel holds all the cards here and allegedly are funding Hamas to give them the excuse to commit genocide. How about you investigate that then, BBC? No, silence there, eh? 229 hostages taken. How about you ask Israeli strike forces how airstrikes and bombardments of churches and mosques when Hamas are apparently hiding in tunnels is freeing hostages? Rescuing them alive. The actions of Israel right now imply they do not actually give the slightest bit of a shit about rescuing these people alive. How can they when they don't know exactly where they are, but they're levelling the place anyway? How about the chanting the war? The BBC team to have a right bee in its bonnet about the chanting. They're chanting from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. And apparently this is a threat to Israeli existence, and most Jews fear for their lives when they hear it, not to mention Suella Braverman regarding it as anti-Semitic. Well, they had to shoehorn in that play again, didn't they? The phrase, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is exactly what it says on the tin. From the River Jordan, which forms the eastern border of Israel and the West Bank, exactly why the West Bank is called the West Bank, they're on the West Bank of the River Jordan, to the sea, the Mediterranean, forming the western border of Israel and the thin bit of coastline that the Gaza Strip has. It simply means from east to west, Palestine will be free. Why should they not be? Is that not the two-state solution? The only people opposed to that phrase are people opposed to the two-state solution then. So when a Bradman thinks it's anti-Semitic, well, she's married to a Jewish chap, she might think she has skin in the game, the BBC might see her as someone worthy of reference as a result of that happy coincidence. But when she's the sort of person who dreams of deporting people, wants to x-ray kids to make sure they are kids, thinks sticking migrants on a legionella riddled prison barge is humane, who are the BBC kidding when they hold her up as an example of how they think we should all be regarding the prospect of freedom for Palestinians? Are they having a laugh? As for most Jewish people fearing the prospect, most Jewish people, I'm sure, do not associate themselves with the conduct of Israel. Indeed, a great many Jewish people were marching yesterday in solidarity with Palestine. So once more, this is the BBC conflating Judaism with Zionism, because the Zionists can go and do one when they're on the side of a country right now committing genocide in the name of their right to exist, committing genocide against people who just want their own right to exist. How dare the BBC treat us the public with such absolute contempt and take us for being utter fools. Sure, there will be Jewish people interviewed to make this point for the BBC. There will always be some who will help their narratives claim they are in fear. In fact, I'll depart from the BBC slightly here because they aren't alone in this. Picking up this very point was ITV News interviewing of all people Rabbi Ephraim Mervis, who will, of course, and went said and said the Jewish people are one single large family to Paul Brand. What's that? Very nice way of putting it, Rabbi Mervis, but families also happen to disagree with each other. And when he also went on to say Jewish people are now more fearful than at any time since World War II, well, he's just blatantly running cover for Israel at this point, and not Judaism. Jewish people joined this march, joined the marches across the world. The truth is before their eyes, they aren't all Zionists. I'd wager most of them aren't, and you also don't need to be Jewish to even be a Zionist. God knows Keir Starmer proves that point. Though no doubt many would be considered by some to be the wrong type of Jew. But this aspect of the BBC interview, this argument amidst all the destruction on both sides, helps nobody at all. It is an argument that Israel have the right to do what they are doing now and have been doing for 75 years since the Nakba, and the Palestinians do not have that same right in return, that right to exist. I don't accept that. I will never accept that, and I'll condemn anyone making that assertion and hold them to account. All people have a right to life. When one side here, though, considers the other to not be human, but to be beasts and animals, as the former UN ambassador for Israel literally said of the Palestinian people the other day on TV, such is their emboldenment that global media and politicians the world over will stand by them, regardless of what they say, they no longer even hide it. Don't watch the BBC. Do join a demonstration for Palestine, though. Do keep yourself informed by turning away from mainstream media sources and embrace the alternatives, because it is those alternatives via social media at this moment in time coming together to expose the truth of this horrific situation going on, this genocide that is caused, causing Israel in its own atrocity commitments such a headache now. They've been exposed. They're still being exposed. And so most of the mainstream media when their narratives fall so far short of what passes for even basic journalism and integrity now. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful. Please share and like and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Please do leave a comment below and join in the conversation on this as well. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where even calling for a ceasefire is met by stonewalled silence from our political leaders. And what happens? We see Gaza on fire.
and the blood of so many innocents on their hands as we've seen in recent days. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks. <laughs>